Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. In this video, I want to share with you 10 quarantine ideas for audiophiles. Now, before we jump into the video, if you're into home theater, audio, and video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right, guys, right now our world is kind of in a mess. I mean, it's in chaos and it's in turmoil. And when you look at the news, um, honestly, it's pretty depressing. And so here on this channel, I don't want to focus on the negative. I'm going to focus on the positive because I'm pretty much an overall optimist. And so I just try to look for the glass that is half full, not half empty. And so in this video, I just want to share with you kind of 10 things that can kind of help you during this time when a lot of us have um, just some downtime, um, have some time maybe away from work, um, some time where um, you know we're supposed to be uh, self-isolated possibly or in quarantine and um, just kind of that whole social distancing thing. And so um, in this video, like I said, I'm just gonna give you 10 things that I think can help occupy your time, some things that would be very productive for your home theater. So with that said, let's just jump in to the list. All right, so number one is watch a movie. You have built a home theater, whether it's in your living room, in a basement, in a garage, or in a dedicated theater room, um, wherever that might be, watch a movie. There's some great content out there that is family friendly that can kind of bring you together as a family. And so that would of course just be the obvious thing, watch a movie together. Another thing kind of along the lines with that would be uh, maybe to play some games. Um, we do one with our family, it's called Jackbox. Um, you can go to jackbox.tv and basically what you do is everybody in the room, I think you can play up to about eight people. And so you go to jackbox.tv on your phone, you purchase, I think it's about 20 bucks, $15 or $20, for the actual software that you download from uh, the PlayStation Store. If you got a PlayStation, they might have it for Xbox, I'm not real sure. But you buy the, the, uh, the game, download it, and there's probably about five different games that you can play, and there's different Jackbox series that you can purchase. And with that, you basically take your phone, you go to jackbox.tv, you plug in a code, and then everybody's phone is synced up, and then the host of the show, will ask a question and everybody kind of answers on their phone and it's just a hilarious. The one that we like the best is called Quiplash. It's absolutely hilarious. So if you got a PlayStation 4, download that. It's a lot of fun, but watch a movie, play some games in your home theater to buy some time and really to build some great memories as a family. All right, number two is if you have a universal remote control. So in my home theater, I use the Harmony Elite uh, from Logitech, and this has been a great remote. It's not perfect, but it's a great remote. It's um, RF, so basically it does not have to be in line of sight. I could have the remote just kind of down here or pointing this way, and it connects with the Harmony Hub which is connected to my Wi-Fi network. And so with that, um, you can easily set this up and program it with your phone. And so that makes it really, really convenient. And what's great is I can click, you know, watch a movie and it'll turn my projector on. It'll turn on my uh, preamp and processor and my amplifier. And it'll turn on my uh, Blu-ray player, or my 4K player, and set all the inputs on the projector, on the receiver, and all of that syncs up with one button. And I can even tell it to, at the end of turning all that on, go ahead and dim my lights after like 20 seconds. And so I love universal remote controls. There's a lot of great brands out there. Um, you can get them from Control 4, you can get them from Universal Remote Control, which is uh, URC. A uh, little bit more complex to program. This is probably by far the easiest. Super, super easy. Again, you just do it through the Harmony uh, app on your phone, which makes it really, really convenient. But since you got some time on your hand, um, maybe go through and really learn how to use this thing, how to set up those what they call macros, which is where you press one button and it does certain things. A friend of mine, here's an example of kind of some custom things that you can do. A friend of mine, when he hits the pause button during a movie, it pauses the, you know, his 4K player, 
but it also in, um, turns on some of his lights in his room. Not like full blast, but it turns like maybe two of his can lights on maybe say 20% just so that you can see and walk around. Maybe that's, you know, you're hitting it so you can go to the bathroom or whatever. And then when he hits play, he has another macro set to where those lights turn off and then the movie continues. That's pretty slick. And so there's a lot you can do with this, but until you actually dive into it and learn all the ins and outs, you're probably missing out on some really cool features. So learn your remote control. All right, number three, learn something new. With a lot of time on your hands, there is a lot in the home theater space that maybe you don't know. And so now is a great time to do some research. Um, maybe you need to learn more about Dolby Atmos. There's plenty of YouTube uh, content out there that will teach you all about the ins and outs of Dolby Atmos. Um, maybe there's something that you've always wanted to learn like REW or Mini DSP. Now would be a great time to dive into that. Um, just to kind of give you a personal story about probably about a month ago for the first time i've had the mini dsp in my home theater sadly for about a year and i really just looked at it and i was overwhelmed because i didn't know what i was looking at i download the software and i'm looking on youtube and really i just couldn't find a concise step by step how does this thing work how do you set it up how do you implement it into your system a friend of mine, Stephen Smith, began a YouTube channel called Home Theater Gurus. If you have not checked out his channel, he's got some incredible content. Definitely go subscribe to his channel. But I was talking with him one day and I'm like, Stephen, I'm going to really just dive into Mini DSP head first and I'm going to use your tutorial as my guide. And so he was so gracious. He was incredible um, to kind of help me out when I stumbled across a couple of issues and it was more my setup than, than uh, his tutorial. But go check out his channel. He's got some great tutorials step-by-step -step through that. I cannot express to you enough how much the Mini DSP has changed the dynamics in the base for my setup. My room has some acoustic issues. Um, anytime I would run REW and show the frequency response in my room, a lot of times I would have these big nasty nulls. And unless you're using some software like REW, which is free, RumiQ Wizard is free, you use in conjunction with something like this, a mini DSP. Uh, this is the UMIC1 or UMIC1, U-M-I-K-1. It's about a hundred bucks. Basically, you place this in your listening area and then you use some software called REW to take measurements and to play frequencies in the room and it will let you know and kind of plot out a graph um, called a frequency response. And so without getting too technical on it, it just lets you know how your speakers and especially in my case, how my subwoofers are interacting with each other in my room. And so it allows you to do some things like, okay, maybe there's a certain frequency that is just really bad. It, it's not producing quality bass. It's a null, so there's a lack of bass. And literally by moving a subwoofer um, six inches or a foot or moving it from this wall to this wall and running the, uh, the frequency sweep again, you may find, man, I get much better bass response over there. Maybe it's turning a subwoofer um, 90 degrees. Maybe it's adjusting things like um, the delay within Mini DSP or on the subwoofer itself. There's a lot of information online that can help you walk through that. And like I said, especially Steven's video, it was super, super helpful to me. But since you've got some time, dive into REW, pick up something like a UMIC one. I'll post a link to it down in the description below. There's also some other great mics out there. I think Dayton makes one. Um, this is just kind of the most popular one. So that's the one I picked up and it works really well for my setup. And so spend some time, learn things like REW, learn something new and that'll benefit your home theater immensely. Number four, this one is probably one of the most neglected things in home theater and that's dusting. I'll be honest with you, I hate to dust, but when is the last time you looked underneath your amplifier? When's the last time that you dusted on top of your surround back speakers? I know it's been a while for me. I've got curtains 
that have been up there since I installed them like 10 years ago. So I really need to climb up there and dust, get rid of that junk, wipe down your speakers. Um, I usually recommend don't put any kind of chemicals on them. Just take a damp washcloth, put a little bit of water on it and just gently wipe them down. Get all that dust off of there. Um, spend some time since you have it to go into all your cabinet racks. Maybe you have to even remove your receiver. I know it's a big pain in the butt, but you don't want a bunch of dust inside your electronics especially. And so take a moment, spend a day, spend a half day, spend a couple hours, whatever it takes, dust your entire room. That's something, like I said, that's often neglected. Number five, since we're talking about cleaning, when's the last time you cleaned underneath your theater seats? I know the last time I did that was when I got the Valencia Tuscany theater seats. And when I removed my old theater seats, man, there was all kinds of crap underneath my seats. There was candy, there was popcorn, um, just oh, I found a little bit of money. People had dropped some stuff. I found remote controls that I thought I had lost, little ones like the little Apple remote control. Um, that thing always slides down in the cracks of the seats. And so take the time, look underneath your seats, vacuum, maybe you gotta move them, uh, flip them upside down, whatever it takes, clean out from under that and make it all nice and tidy. Number six, fix the rattles in your room. Now, if you've got big subwoofers, 15 inches, 18 inches, some of you guys have 21 inches, some of you guys are absolutely nuts, like Scott Newby that's got eight or nine 18 inch subwoofers in his room, but the reality is all of that bass travels and all that bass pressurizes and all of that bass oftentimes flexes different things in your room and causes resonances through your room. Now, when you're listening to a movie, um, you may hear a vibration, but you don't know what frequency is causing that vibration. And a lot of times I know I can hear it somewhere up there, but I don't know exactly where it's at. And so my recommendation on how to find specific vibrations and specific resonances in your room is to um, either use REW. With REW, you can generate test tone frequencies. So you can say, okay, play a 50 hertz frequency, and then you can listen at a good volume and find out what vibrates at 50 hertz. Another thing that you can do, there's plenty of apps that are free online on your phone that you can download that will allow you to generate test tone frequencies. And so basically what I would recommend is start with maybe say um, 200 hertz and just begin to slowly walk down from 200 all the way down to maybe even 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 5 hertz, depending on the, uh, the level of your subwoofer and what they can play down to. And so put the volume at a decent level. You know, you may want to put it a little bit under reference on your, uh, your AVR or your preamp processor and just begin to go through those. And when you hear a vibration, um, let's say you've got a picture frame on the wall and it's vibrating. One of the easiest things to do is pick up some of those little round uh, felt pads. And so you just stick those on the back of there and that provides a nice cushion in between say your wall and that picture frame. You may find that you've got a can light that is vibrating in your ceiling. And so again, you gotta figure out what can I put in between there that's a soft material that will keep that from vibrating. So I know it's tedious, but that's something that can really make a difference in your theater room if you don't have those annoying vibrations every time the bass hits. And number seven is clean out your drawers and your cabinets. I know not too long ago, I went through all of my drawers all of my cabinets and I began to find stuff that I literally haven't used in probably seven years, eight years. There were cables, there was connectors, there was adapters, just different components that I had an old DVD player um, that I haven't used literally in about mm, eight to 10 years. Why is it still there? Throw the thing away, donate it to Goodwill, do something with it, but clean it out. So go through all your cables, go through all of your, your cabinets and just organize them. Even, you know, wrap them up, get them nice and tidy and that sort of thing. I know, like I said, I went through all of my cables and the ones that I kept, I wound them up nice and tight. I used these right here, which are phenomenal. These are little Velcro straps. Um, I love these things. These help me 
to organize all of my cables. And then once I wind them up, um, then I just kind of attach that so they don't come undone. And it just makes it really, really easy to keep that nice and tidy and organized in a drawer or in a cabinet. Now I even have a video on this. I know it seems silly, but I've got a video on this um, just kind of showing my process and what I do and how I wind cables so that they stay nice and round and you don't damage those. So I'll link that video up here in the card above as well as in the description below. All right, number eight is watch different home theater tours to get ideas on what you can do either with your future home theater that you want to build or maybe your current home theater. And so lately, if you've noticed on the channel, I've been producing more home theater tours. You guys seem to really enjoy them and I love doing them and I love just getting ideas and hearing other brands and just seeing what other guys in the home theater space have done in their own home theater. And so a couple of places you can do, of course, you can search for youtube.com. I've got a whole playlist that I'll post at the end of this video of just home theater tours that I have done on the channel. But the other thing you can do is go to my website, hometheatertours.com, and that's got all of those home theater tours in one concise location, as well as all the components that are used in their setups. All right, number nine is cable management. How many times have you looked behind your home theater to see this big jumbled mess of cables just all interconnected. You have no idea what's connected where. It's just a mess, what they call a rat's nest. Well, one thing that has really helped me, and I don't know why it took so long for me to do this, but I figured out that these little guys right here are almost magical, man. I love these, these little Velcro straps. They are amazing. They're super cheap. I think you can get like 50 of them or 100 of them probably for around $7, $10 on Amazon. I'll link those down in the description, but I use these on literally everything, not only on my cables and my drawers, but also behind my equipment. And so if you think about it, in my room, I've got a 7.1.4. So I have four speakers, Atmo speakers that are going up the wall and through the attic. I've got seven ground level uh, speakers and so there are cables all on the back of my receiver as well as um, you know the XLR cables that are going from my preamp to the amplifier um, then you've got HDMI cables and if you don't tend to that it's just a garbled mess back there and I know it's kind of a pain but now might be a great opportunity for you to climb behind your cabinet or, or pull all your stuff out and really just kind of tidy up those cables and i'm talking about everything tidy up your hdmi cables tidy up the power cables tidy up those xlr cables the speaker cables anything that you can kind of bundle up together one thing i would not recommend though is make sure you do not bundle a power cable and like a uh, a source cable or a speaker cable um, because that's when you can introduce interference and kind of get like basically a hum into your system. And so you want to separate your power cables, kind of route them one direction and then route, route all your other connections. You know, maybe you want to bundle all of your speaker wires together. Maybe you want to bundle all your HDMI cables together. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm not a, um, an expert on it. I just like it nice and clean because I have to occasionally pull out my theater cabinet climb back in there and the last thing I want to do is have to kind of weave through all this mess of cables just dangling underneath my platform. And so managing those cables is a huge, um, it, it's kind of a huge task sometimes depending on how many cables you have, but I promise you guys once you get done with it, it's extremely satisfying. And that brings me to my 10th quarantine idea for audio files and that is be still and rest. The reality guys, I don't know about you, but my life sometimes is extremely busy. I have two businesses, Youth Man Reviews, as well as a home business in graphic design and website development, but also have a family of six that is very active. And so my plate continually stays full. And so if I could give you some words of encouragement during this kind of 
season of life that's kind of chaotic right now. Spend some time just by yourself. Maybe it's in the theater room. Maybe it's in your bedroom. Maybe it's in your office. Get some place that it's quiet just to think. Maybe to read a book. Maybe to dream, you know, about your future, about your plans, about your goals. Um, or maybe even about what your thoughts are on your home theater, what direction you want to go. And so take this opportunity. Don't miss out. There's, I always try to look for the good in everything, even in bad situations, even in frustrating situations. We can either make situations like this make us bitter or it can make us better. And I don't know about you, but I want to go through this whole ordeal and allow it to make me a better person tomorrow than I am today. All right, guys, I hope you have found this video encouraging. I know in light of all this mess that's going on in the world, it can be really easy just to get down and get discouraged and kind of gloom and doom. But I can tell you, man, I want today to count. I want my life to matter, and I want to enjoy the time that I have right now. And I want to be a blessing and encourager to you. Don't get discouraged, man. We're going to make it through this one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's got enough worries of its own. And if you guys like home theater tours, as I mentioned earlier in the video, check out this playlist right up here. That's got a bunch of them on there that can keep you entertained for quite a while. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.